Previously on Divorce Court. You know, I haven't been at home lately because of all this extra time she's been spending with other men. And that's not me being insecure. That's her not respecting me, and it makes me question her loyalty her to loyalty. me. I'm the breadwinner. Come on, be honest with the, be, be honest with the woman. Me and her go way back. <laughs> so... I take care of Isaiah. I buy Isaiah's clothes. I get Isaiah's haircut. I provide Isaiah with food. Like, everything that Isaiah, that belongs to Isaiah is because of me. What do you want Isaiah for? <laughs> Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Isaiah Moore and Vicki Halston in the continuation of their Before Your Vows case. Uh, when we uh, came here in an earlier session, Ms. Moore and Ms. Halston were talking about the issues that you had the love that you had for her and the love that you had for him, but the issues, some of those issues involved of the people. One is Aries Thomas. I want you to come forward. She is your niece. And Ms. Halston, you have trouble with Aries, and you're gonna tell me about that. And then there is Richard Sanders, which you will come forward, is Ms. Halston's best friend. So much so that the two of you got each other's ta names tattooed on yourselves, and Mr. Moore <laughs> is not comfortable with that. So, before I start anything, Ms. Harson, I'm going to start with you. What is your problem with Ms. Thomas? She don't know her place. Explain that to me. She don't know how to stay in her lane. She's not in the relationship with me and Isaiah. It's me and Isaiah in a relationship. Not me and Isaiah and Aries and Richard. It's me and Isaiah. How does she impede or, or step into your relationship inappropriately? Give me some examples of some things she's done. For example, she, when she said that she seen me out with another guy and it wasn't true, like, if you did, mind your business. Like, I don't tell your business. Like, I don't, you know, like, I don't be out here, you know, telling whoever you in a relationship with what you do. Why do you have a problem with everything that I do? Ms. Thomas, do you have, have a problem, problem with everything, everything she, she does? does? She's a liar. Do you, li do you believe that they're a good couple? I do, but it's just she needs to learn how to respect people. I, I still respect her even though she's my uncle girlfriend, but she is very disrespectful. Like, she's the capital definition of disrespect. Of disrespectful. Like, she came over my house and stole my jeans and then thought I wasn't going to remember it because she came over, like, two months later what am I? And I'm like, wow, those are my jeans. Did but you I didn't steal her jeans and then wear them in front of her? I remember that. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, Judge, that's what she on, did. Now, I remember look at, that. Look at Aries and look at me. Do you really she, think that I can fit? before she. Do you really you know, think that I can fit? Before her she gained the weight. Yes. Aries is almost. Mm. No, that's the guy. All right. She was, yeah. I, I, I see the nature of this this problem. Now I'm going to try to get the nature of this problem. You do say you're best friends, and I think it's really odd that you got your names tattooed on each other. Yeah. I yes, really do. Very. So why don't you tell me what the two of you have been through together that would cause someone to do something so extreme? He's been there with me through everything. I just lost... Stand up, Mr. Moore. I just lost my mom um, in May of this year, the day before Mother's Day, and um, I couldn't... Couldn't get in contact with Isaiah, you know, for him to be there to support me, you know, or whatever. And my best, my best friend was there through everything. You How know, long like have you gave, known each other? Um, for about like almost three years, two, almost three years. She's but so well, well, Mr. I'm gonna hear from Mr. Sanders because. You know, I've known people for three years and gotten along with them, and then, you know, in the fourth year, we kind of separate. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't prompt me to put my name, their name on my body, Mr. Sanders. Why? See, this is the reason why. Me, I have a, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm grew up in the hood, so, I mean, I have, like, problems of having people around me, and when I do have a friend, I like to keep them close. They, like, she my best friend, you feel me? You so like it's to like... Keep her close. Stop, stop. That's my girl. We're friends. Stop. We're friends, though. You mm -hmm. feel me? It's like, I'm not trying to say nobody girl, but I love my friends, you feel me? I'm gonna look out for my friends. What is it that has happened between the two of you that has brought you so close? She been there for me. I mean, she, she always had my back. I mean, anything, if I, if I, if I didn't, if I couldn't afford to pay for anything, she would pay for it. I know for a fact she's the person who I can call on. You feel me? Like, when I get a girlfriend or a wife, I want her to be like my best friend. And as a female, as a female friend, I would want her to, you know, 
look and analyze the female who I talk to and give me her advice. You feel me? I understand you. It's a good excuse. I, I, I understand you. Let me just ask what I'm wondering. Have you two ever been romantic? Never. Never. You never even thought about it. You never even went that way. No one, one night when you were drunk and looked across the bar. <laughs> no. Hey, I asked for this. I might want to yeah, ask you. Hang on. Let, let me ask you. I asked for this. this. It, it, judge, it was one. Never. It was judge. We go out like we go out like. We're girlfriends, you know, like we're friends, you know, like you know how you have, you know how you have friends that you hang out right. with and you go have drinks with and everything. That's what we do. Okay. You know, like I have gotten drunk. We both have gotten drunk to the point where we couldn't even drive home. And I fell asleep at his house, you know, and um, I slept in the guest room, fully clothed. I mean, shoes, purse, everything was mm -hmm. still on me when I woke up. Y'all must have really been laid out. You yeah. 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 sleep with your shoes and your purse you know, on. That, um, that quite we got you. woke. We would we have, we would have still been asleep if it wasn't for Mr. Moore coming down the street, parks his mother's car in front of my best friend's house, gets on top of his mother's car, not the hood, the roof, Judge. He got on top of the roof of the car with a bull horn. <laughs> and he was like, come outside, I know you in there. I know y'all having sex. And the neighbors is outside, and this is like about like four or five o'clock in the morning. So you know people, they walk their dog around that time before they go and to work. And he's up on the roof of the car with the bull yes. horn. Yes. Say, come on yes. out, I know you in there. And the neighbors look. Well, we gonna have to talk, Mr. Moore, we gonna mm -hmm. talk about that. You believe Miss Halston has a rage problem. She sat down in the kitchen and went pound in the wall. Pound, bow, bow, bow. Did you punch a hole in the wall? <laughs>
bow, bow, bow. They actually brought a pitcher. I brought a pitcher. <laughs> Did you punch a hole in the wall? <laughs> That's a yes. She Why? doesn't. She doesn't remember, Your Honor. She doesn't recollect anything. Well, what was the problem? What was she angry about? She was angry because Stop she felt it. like at the end of the day that I was doing something that I had no business doing. She exactly. also took a blender out of our kitchen and threw it inside of the hallway. Because she was mad. There we are. Exhibit two. <laughs> <laughs> did you did, did you crush the blender? I would rather have threw the blender than to throw him. What does he do that makes you so angry that you have to destroy property? He calls me names. Like, he calls me, uh, he calls me an ogre and, um, and Shrek. Like, why would you do that to me? Do you call a Shrek? Mr. Moore, now, First off, you I want to apologize. You, you, look, you, 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 you know, a woman that you say you love is crying, and you over there laughing. How, so she, how does that? How does that work? You know what? We got an extremely friendly relationship. We joke with each other all the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't, Do you? <laughs> you see her laughing? We're Man, gonna I talk. No, like we that. gotta I talk can't about do that. that. I'm sorry. We gotta about talk that. about that. Hang on. All I can really do is apologize. But you know, me sleeping with a woman and having to see another man's name on her chest, that's hurtful, too. What we're not going to do is we're not going to cry. We're going to deal with it. OK, Mr. Moore, let me tell you where you're wrong, and that's then not right. let me help you out. Should Isaiah be more accepting of Vicky's close friendship with Richard? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mr. Mr. Moore, I want you to stop entertaining yourself for a second and listen to the answers that she gives to the following questions. Ms. Harleston, you got very upset when you started telling me about him calling you Shrek and an ogre. Is he regularly unkind, disrespectful, and rude? What, what choked you up so much? Because I have low self-esteem issues, you know, like, when it does come to my weight, you know, and um, he feeds off of that, you know, and he thinks it's funny. It's not funny, you know, like, I don't call him names. I'm very respectful to him, you know. I have my moments, you know, I'm human, you know, but it's just like... <clears throat> Mr. Moore, I'm gonna give you a little help. You think everything is a little bit funny, right? I do, and I need somebody to lighten up a little bit and not take everything so to heart, because I'm here right now, you know. I'm here, I'm trying to work this thing out. All I can really do is apologize, but you know, me sleeping with a woman and having to see another man's name on her chest, that's hurtful too. Right. But you don't see me down on my knees crying, trying to make myself the victim. Everybody got low self-esteem about some something, you know? I do. But at the end of the day, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna cry. We're gonna deal with it. And you're not gonna use stuff that I've said in the past. Okay, Mr. Moore, let me tell you where you're wrong and that's then not right. let me help you out. The thing is, just because something doesn't hurt you doesn't mean it hurts, doesn't hurt somebody else. There are things my husband can say to me I can't say to him because his feelings would be hurt, but mine won't. And part of being a, a, a married couple is not doing what you think is right, but doing what won't hurt your spouse. You're right. You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and women are very hard of themselves about their weight. It's a horrible thing, you know, you know, I'm always looking at that. Don't tease her about her weight, okay? You're right. You're right. Now, we gotta move forward, because I've seen chaos and disrespect and tattoos and, and, and bullhorns. I want you to tell me, in 30 seconds, despite all of this nonsense we have been talking about for two days, <laughs> why are you still considering marrying Mr. Moore? I feel like he's the one for me, but I just feel like if he can grow up and he can be more responsible 
for his actions and things that he does. I think that we can move forward, and I think that we can, you know, be one of those relationships that's like 15, 20 years, you know, down the line. I love him with all my heart. Like, I do. Well, that wasn't very good. <laughs> you started out with, I think we can make it, if he, and then listed all the things that you didn't like about him, and then you said, if he fixed it, I think we can stay together. So I didn't hear any good characteristics. I didn't hear what you liked about him. I heard complaints. I'm going to give you another five sec, another 10 seconds. Say something nice about him. He's sweet, charming, charismatic, and... Um... All right, now I know you see him. Mr. Moore, you got 30 seconds. Give me your best romantic pitch about why Miss Halston is the woman for you. Besides everything that I've said and, you know, the things that I said to hurt Miss Halston, Vicky, you know, I want to apologize. And I feel like if we work together to do those things that we just went over with in your courtroom, if we, you know, have more communication, if we go to the doctor and um, get that laser surgery removed, so she can get that name out of here, then we can move forward. If we both put in, you know, 100% and 100%, then we can make it work. I don't know what's so hard about that question, because nobody can ever answer it. I asked you to give a mad professional love, and you, and you gave a, a, a dissertation about complications and compromises. That was terrible. <laughs>Is Isaiah and Vicky's two-year relationship worth saving? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I went through your compatibility test, and I want to say this to you, Mr. Moore. The last time you came here with another woman... And, when, and I asked you list five things that are wrong with you. You said nothing because you're perfect. You have grown since then. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you so much. You have listed some things. You listed communications, overthinking, mm -hmm. and then you got silly with it. You said overly attractive <laughs> and overly apologetic. Too nice. So you're grown a little, but not as much as I would have liked. I think the two of you have allowed what's out beyond you to define too much of what's going within you. I think the two of you have an idea about wanting to get married, but don't have a really good idea who the other one is and how you can satisfy that other person's needs. I think she's really tight with Mr. Sanders because maybe he's filling some kind of need or void that you haven't really gotten to yet. I don't know. But that, that could be a possibility. If I were you, I would be concerned about that. And I would wonder about that. And I would want to really find out who she is. And I would want you to find out who he is. Because I don't think you really know. I, you know, you, you, you're throwing things. And you're angry. And family. And best friends. But do you ever sit down together alone, have a conversation, know where you want to go, what you want to do, how you want to get it done, you know, what your needs are, how you're going to live your life, what you're going to be, what, you know, the kids, the money, everything, all of that. All of that needs to happen in the absence of these two or anybody else. I can't give you back your license. Again, Mr. Moore, I'm going to turn you down. But this one you got a shot at. Okay. I'm not going to tell her to run. I'm just going to tell her to back away slowly <laughs> and see if you can get it together and come correct. This matter is adjourned. Do I think Vicky is the one that I'm going to end up with? Probably. You know, and then maybe not. I think I need to just focus more on my relationship because I do want to be with Isaiah for the rest of my life and I do want to have his kids, you know, so I think it is something that is worth moving forward with.